<laughs> Alright guys, welcome to the next installment of the Hearst Project which I've already stuck the bumpers on, they, they fit great I only needed to trim the inside of the front bumpers just a little bit to get them past the body they are a little crooked but I mean there's not really anything I can do about that, it's just kinda how they want to go on, it still looks nice though unfortunately the LEDs that I had for the front of the car I guess they were they were not powerful enough I, uh, I plugged them into the chassis and, and turned it on and they instantly blew up so I have to place an order for some 12 volt ones and uh, that might take a little while before those come in I went ahead and I stuck the rear door back on and I actually trimmed I'm gonna say good eighth of an inch off the bottom because I mean I cut that by hand when I was a kid so it's now really straight fits nice you can actually see the license plate bezel All right. this door was actually a pain in the butt to put back on and I'm glad I did not film that because I would be editing out a lot of swear words um, between this door and the the headlights blowing up constantly I even tried ones for the WPL vehicles they blew up instantly as well um, so I was quite frustrated with it and I had to walk away from it for about a day what I'm gonna do now is I have this overhang on here I always thought it looked kinda cool but I'm gonna sand this off and I'm gonna get these edges real nice try to plane down some of the the old paint on here so I could repaint the entire back section flat black and then we're gonna try to get these really cool um, I guess you can call them like little sconces or trim pieces on the side the ones that Tommy made for us and hopefully get this thing somewhat closer to being done because this is taking quite a lot longer than I ever expected uh, mainly because this thing was absolute trash when I got started. I mean, <laughs> trying to turn what should have gone in the trash can into something usable. So I'm not going to push down on this because this body is very fragile. So I'm going to stand it up like this and just try to carefully sand whatever I can. have now is a very smooth transition I'm gonna have to add a little bit of filler to some of the gaps you can tell I've added filler many many years ago but uh, it's time to add a little bit more I think I'm gonna leave it like this I was going to add a little bit more to it or even peel off the pieces and try to reset them in a little better because it overhangs but the plastic, I wasn't counting on it being this dried out. It is very fragile, and if I go prying on this, the whole body is going to shatter. So I'm going to leave it as it is, and just, uh, we're going to repaint it, throw the trim on there, and just call it good. That work for you guys? All right, guys, what I'm going to be using to fill in these gaps is just some JB Quick. Um, I'm not exactly a fan of JB Quick because it doesn't appear to be as hard as regular JB Weld, but I think it will work for my purposes. So I'm going to scoot the car back. This is the hardener, so we want to use this one. I'm just using a piece of aluminum, same piece I used to make the bed on the C14. Kind of a lot here. It looks like we have a lot to fix. Once we start getting an even gray color like this, it's usually ready to go, but I'm going to mix it just for about a minute longer just to make sure I've mixed all the hardener into it. All right. Taking just little bits at a time, I want to force it into the cracks. And 
neighbor kids are very loud around here. Trying not to block all of the shot here. Alright, I don't care if there's a little bit of build up, I will sand this back down. This stuff's usually pretty good at sanding down. I will carefully plane it down. Add a little bit more in the low spot. And that is good. Now we just wait. I am very happy to say that it is now time to repaint the back side of the car. This has been a long time coming. This has been sitting around just getting uglier over the years. And now I finally get to do something about it. So I'm going to try to make sure I don't mess this door up. Again, famous last words. Let's close it. I've been kind of playing with the idea of repainting the whole car. But, I, I think I've settled on no. I kind of like the age that the paint has kind of fallen into. The, just the kind of disrepair, kind of scuffed up, scratched up, terrible looking paint that it is. I think it adds a little bit of character to it. Lightly dust it. some black. I know I'm going to be dealing with a little bit of bleed through on the tape, so hoping it's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and I have some chalkboard paint because I find that it actually makes a much better flat black than just your average can. I use this whenever I make Halloween props. I um, actually have a example this past year, I actually had somebody give me a bag of cement that they didn't want. So I'm like, what do I do with a bag of cement? So I just started manufacturing skulls. I wish I had made a video of it because it was pretty cool. And I used the chalkboard paint to age it before, you know, scrubbing it with a scotch bright and then clearing it to give it that old, dirty, out of the ground, wet look. It almost looks like there's roots growing through it. So maybe I'll make a video about that this October. If anyone wants to see that, just send me a message. All right. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, maybe we can get some black on this car, huh? This tip is kind of clogged shooting drops out. Hope it doesn't mess up the overall paint job. Trying to get it down in the grooves of the wood. Trying to go with with the grain. Now it's gonna look shiny for a few minutes until it cures. Wanted to put a very thick coating on it because I know the wood's still going to be able to absorb much of the paint. So, time to let it dry again. Alright, it's important when laying down any heavy coat of paint that might overlap your tape is before it's completely cured, you're going to want to remove the tape. Otherwise, if you wait for it to completely dry and you peel it, it's going to take your paint with it. So I'm going to carefully unwrap the hearse. Hey, I didn't get a lot of bleed on there at all. Alright, I can pull the tape off of the 
door. There it is. Now comes the fun part. I'm trying to get the side trim pieces on the hearse without messing up the paint. That looks really freaking sick. So I need a way to prop up the hearse. Guess I'll use a whole bunch of cans. Oh, and Tommy, since I sent you the General Lee, this is the paint you use to repaint it. Rust-Oleum Protective Gloss Enamel Orange. Just orange. You don't need the Krylon 2X or anything. It's not the right shade. This is. Um, if you can't find it, I might just send you this can. It's really the only reason I bought it. Alright. Now that it's propped up, I need to carefully glue it and then stick it in place. I used to have some broad tipped tweezers, but uh, apparently either the wife or the kids have run away with them. So I need to find where I want this and practice sitting it there. <laughs> this is going to be hard. This is going to be really hard to do. Okay. Because you only get one shot. Because I don't want glue showing. So it's time to put glue on it. My hands are already shaking, so this is a good omen. This is where I'm going to take this brush and just, just paint the surface with the glue. Making sure not to have it blobbing up too much in more than one spot. Trying to keep even pressure. <laughs> Man, this is some nerve-wracking stuff. I really hope I like that spot because it's staying there. Start applying pressure to it. I really thought I was going to have to cut these down, but it looks like they're perfect. Which just uh, enforces my previous statement that Tommy knows exactly what he's doing. Alright, it's on. Now for the other side. Alright, here she is. All cleaned up with her fancy bumpers. Backside's all done. I realize that door does not shut all the way, but there's not really a lot I can do about it. All it needs now is some LED lights for the front, which I'm going to try to order within the next couple days. And when they come in, I will wire them up. We will lower the body onto the chassis, bolt it down, and we're gonna watch this thing drive which it has not done my gosh probably since 2008 so stay tuned thanks for watching as always and I will see you guys next time